Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the webinar on 899 Occupational Health. In this webinar, we'll be talking through the lot one aspect of the framework, Occupational Health Services. We will also be presenting the lot two aspect, Employee Assistant Programme, on Tuesday, the 2nd of July. If you are interested in that, then please register after this webinar. Just to make you aware, this webinar is not going to take a full 60 minutes. It will probably only be around 20 to 30 minutes long. Just to introduce myself, I am Charlotte Kennett, the category buyer here at YPO. I sit within the HR services area, which covers the procurement of recruitment, training, and anything else that fits within the HR remit. I'm just quickly going to go through some housekeeping. You have all joined this webinar in a listening mode only. However, you do have access to type questions throughout the webinar. I will go through some of the questions at the end, and if I don't, I will create a Q&A document and share it with you um, at the end. So today we are going to cover the background of the framework, give you an overview of what is included within the framework, features and benefits, and any best, best practice I can also share with you. Firstly, I would just quickly mention who YPO are. So YPO was established 45 years ago, and we have a wide range of customers within the public sector. We're 100% publicly owned by 13 local authorities, which means all our profits go back into the public sector customers. We have a large choice of available products and services with leading UK suppliers. So we can provide you with everything you could possibly need to successfully run your organization. I'll just start with some gen general, generic information about the Framework Agreement. The Framework Agreement has been put in partnership with London Borough of Islington. Islington contacted YPO to ask us to partner with them to create a national framework. Originally, they had a framework in place, which was just for Employee Assistant Programme and for the London Boroughs to use. However, there was also the need to procure occupational health within the framework, as they very much fit together. The framework period is for two years with the option to extend for an additional 24 months. However, you can call off the contract. Your call off contract can go beyond the life of the framework. So if you want to have a contract in place for five years, you can do. Customers who are able to use the framework are local authorities, emergency services, blue lights, housing, health organization and charities. If your organisation is not on the list, then please get in contact with myself and I can double check if your organisation is eligible to use the framework. So, what is occupational health within your workplace? Occupational health services help keep people fit and well at work, physically and mentally, by managing any risks in the workplace that are likely to give rise to work-related ill health. It is essentially an advisory service providing advice to both employee and employer. I'm just gonna quickly run through an employee journey. What I think um, is in relation to the new starter right through to retirement. So as a new starter, you might want to think about pre-placement questionnaires, fit for work medicals, training, and any adjustment needs for disabilities, sickness during work, referral to occupational health, return to work, develop a re return to work plan and regular meetings, additional external support or advice, for example, a physiotherapy, long-term sickness, review of the treatment, management support, advice to management, promotion of health and wellbeing programs, intervention to prevent common health conditions. Also retirement, retirement is crucial. So retirement medicals, ill health retirement, retirement and wellbeing. But apart from all that, everything else about working life, so workplace adjustments, promotion of health, regular ongoing assessments. I like to think about the whole package and how it will support an employee and you, and you as an employer throughout their career and organisation. What to think about before procuring your organisational needs? What are the results of your health risk assessments? What rates of occupational uh, diseases do you have? What are your absence rates, rehab rehabilitation rates? Do you know the general health of your employees? What is good currently about the service you currently have in place with your provider? But also what are the problems with the service 
you currently have. Get feedback from your employees and managers and maybe your contracting team. What is your current cost of delivery and what services and staff levels do you get for that? Just going to run through how we've created the framework. So we have detailed the core service specification. I'm just going to run through um, some things that we have inputted um, into the core services. So undertake pre-employment health screening, provide a phone line service weekdays between 8.30 and 5.30, support customers to reduce sickness absence, particularly long-term absence, in line with the customer's sickness absence policy and procedures, respond to management referrals arising from sickness absence, provide managers with a clear advice, including advice regarding sickness absence, return to work, redeployment, and where appropriate, retirement on Hill Health grounds. Following referral, provide managers with written reports that enable them to effectively manage the employee and support a speedy return to work. Provide an interactive website with access to information, support and advice on a range of health topics. Optimise the use of IT, making use of technology for ease of speed and convenience in deal with cases that, and complex cases, for example, video consultation. Bringing innovation to, to the contract through use of innovative ways of working. Provide a fully enabled service and continuous seeking opportunities to further streamline processes, for example, tracking appointments and sending text notification of appointments. Provide advice on supporting employees with a disability. Advise managers on reasonable adjustments, which are clear, explained and justified. Manage ill health retirement in line with the customer's pension schemes and provide regular statistic report and compre uh, comprehensive management information to meet customer needs. Being flexible about the timing of reports to meet the customer expectation. We've also done a separate part because we're aware that not everything is covered within the core services. So we add an additional services um, specification. Um, this might not include everything uh, within your organization's requirements. Um, so we, we wanted to consider um, some other alternatives. The additional services are not mandatory or limited to um, the ones we have provided within the specification. But for example, the things that are currently not on our core specification, but could be added as an additional service are providing home visits by um, an occupational health advisor, drug and alcohol testing, and maybe you want in some wellbeing days, these can be provided as an additional service. If you'd like to know more about what is included, please send me an email after this webinar and I will be able to send through the full specification available via this framework. Pricing also has been established for the core service aspect and not for the additional services. This has been done on a price per head basis, dependent on your volumes. So for example, the providers of um, priced based on zero to 999,000 and then 10,000 onwards. With the additional services, some have been um, specified and have been priced. However, this is not limited um, to the ones that we've got within our pricing schedule. So you're probably thinking, what are the suppliers on the framework? Within the lot one, occupational health, we have three providers. Jero Diamond, Health Management and Medigold Health. All these providers have been through a fully vetted process and if you need any information in relation to them, then please let me know. Um, for example, the financial checks and things. What do you want from your provider? So do you need a nurse on site? Do you want value for money? Have they got qualified workers? Do you want quali quality reports? Do you want them to send um, the appointments via letter, text message, email, telephone? Are their systems easy to use? Have they got good customer service? And is there anything that you want that's added value? How can you buy through the YPO Occupational Health Framework? There's the option to do direct award and further competition. For a direct award, you will award a call of contract without reopening competition for the core specification and additional services. A direct award can be made to a supplier if the participating customer, 
by sales can de demonstrate the selected provider offering is the most economically advantageous offer. For a direct award, the customer will use the, spec uh, the specific call of terms and conditions, complete the order form, and send to the selected supplier. However, if you're not too sure what supplier you want to go with, further competition is always a great option. The customer, yourselves, will award a call of contract following a further competition exercise. The customer will use the award criteria set out in the original framework, supplemented with your own specific requirements, and you will invite all successful providers from that specific lot to submit a tender under the sealed bid. Personally, I would say provide as much evidence as possible on the volumes um, that you're likely to go out with for both direct award and further competition. Also provide any 2P considerations from incumbents. Implementation normally takes around eight weeks. However, if you have 2P involved, it could take longer and be more towards 12 week implementation, which you will need to filter into it within your timetables. And some customers forget that. Conducting a further competition. So we've tried to make it as flexible as possible. So the weightings we've allowed for pricing is 0% to 60% and quality at 40 to 100%. I've jotted down some sub-criteria sub examples. Um, sometimes when you come to a further competition, it's quite hard to understand what you want to ask. So account management, how is it going to be? Uh, will you get your own account manager? Um, or how will it be um, managed? Partnership working, are they going to work with your endpoint assessor, uh, employee assistant um, program provider that you have in place? How can YPO help you through procuring your op occupational health services? We can do one-to-one -one meetings. I can come and I can help you with any questions you may have in relation to the framework and get more um, employees in a room to discuss. Supplier engagement days. If you wish to do some upfront engagement with each of the suppliers on the framework, I'm happy to arrange sessions and attend. These are always really useful um, as they all each individually have their own IT platforms. Um, so it's great to have a good example of those on board. Do market research on the providers and gain an understanding of the method of service delivery and the company values they currently give. I can also review specifications. I'm happy to review any specification or further competition documents to make sure everything has been included. Issuing your further competition via our e-tendering portal. Obviously, it's, it's not the easiest to do um, a further competition, but YPO are happy to facilitate that. And all these are for no extra cost. So the document's available for customers. So there's a framework user guide. This includes all information in relation to the framework. There's a pricing information per supplier, further competition template documents and direct award template documents. All documents can be found on the framework page on the website. However, if you're struggling, please let me know and I can email them through to you. Tips. Warm up and market. Give time, share your timetable and avoid last minute rush and do some prior en engagement with the providers. They will all benefit um, within your results, particularly with your further competition. Thank you so much for listening to the webinar. I hope you found it beneficial and le learned about the YPO framework we have put in place. Now it's over to you. Does anyone have any questions in relation to the framework? Please allow me a few moments to collect the questions.
Perfect. So we have a couple of questions. Um, I'm just going to read out the questions that we do have. So what quality and price criteria split did you use at Framework Stitch? So for the quality, we used 70%. And for the pricing aspect, we used 30%. Um, we obviously think that quality and uh, we're talking about people, so it's very important that the quality of the service is a lot larger than the price. Um, we have also got um, a question on, are we allowed to have a copy of the questions asked at Framework Stage and the provider responses? Of course, um, please email me and I can get um, all that documentation over to yourself um, for that. And then... Lastly, we have, is the phone line in the course services on um, employee assistant program or something else? Um, so the phone line, if I, I'm understanding the question correctly, um, we they do provide a phone line service weekdays between 8.30 and, uh, and 5.30. Um, but if not, uh, after this webinar, what I'll do is I'll clarify this question uh, with yourselves and we can go through that as well. I hope that's been useful and thank you so much for attending. Um, if you need any, if you have any other questions, um, please email me separately and I can get those over to you. Uh, so thank you very much. I hope it's been very useful.